Thank you very much. Um, it is such a pleasure and an honor to be here this evening to be a part of this wonderful and amazing keyboard symposium. Um, tonight, most of my program will be devoted to Miss Florence Price. And um, it's a story of many triumphs. And just looking back a little bit over the, um, the most stunning moments from her being recognized as the first African-American female composer to gain national status when she won the Wanamaker uh, composition competition that would lead her to have her symphony performed by the Chicago Symphony Orchestra back in the early 1930s, all the way to when we thought we lost her music, uh, the bulk of her music forever, but no, um, her music was discovered, in fact, um, back in 2008, and what a joyous moment that was, because what seems to be thought of as close to 400 works are somehow uh, available, not completely available, because a lot of the works are still in the um, collection, special collections at the University of Arkansas that still need to be, um, if you will, um, worked on because a lot of the manuscripts have been a bit ruined, but the idea of having the um, availability of her works, that was a beautiful moment and it continues to be a beautiful day every day that a new work is performed and um, it just gives me great pleasure to be a part of that journey. I'd like to start a little bit on the history of Florence Price, going back to the late 1880s, and just turning the corner of when emancipation would uh, come to the end of uh, slavery. Um, her father, uh, Henry, Dr. Henry Smith, a dentist, would move to Little Rock, Arkansas, because a lot of African American men were able to find jobs, were able to sustain careers, were able to afford families, um, provide for their families. And in this case, um, Florence Price's father, who was a dentist, was one of those very successful dentists in the, in the uh, community. He had a number of uh, well-to-do clients, including white clients as well as black clients. And her mother was a music teacher, a pianist. And um, so when Florence Price was born, she was born into a, a very beautiful home. They lived in one of the upper class um, neighborhoods, black neighborhood in Little Rock, and um, she was afforded the exposure to lessons. Um, her mother was her first piano teacher. She gave her first concert at the age of four. Her home was open to other guests, um, primarily black guests that could not or were not allowed to stay in the hotels in Little Rock when passing through. And so her home became a home where she met many, many, many uh, great uh, writers and uh, composers and musicians as she was growing up. So she was actually rather exposed to uh, a rather varied vision, if you will, as to what life could be for this little girl growing up in Little Rock, Arkansas. By the time that Florence was 14, she would finish high school quite early. She was um, a little too young to go to college, and so um, she continued studies before she would go on to New England Conservatory at the age of 16. And she would be the first student to receive a double degree in piano and in organ. 
And so that in itself was another amazing triumph. But there have been challenges, of course, during these times. And I'll just speak of one in this moment. Um, many have asked, is Florence Price African American? Yes, Florence Price is an African, was an African American woman. Florence Price's complexion was very, very fair. And so fair that her mother encouraged her to um, describe herself as something other than black or African American. So on some of her applications, there she would write uh, Hispanic, for example. And why would one do that during this time? Her mother was very concerned for her welfare. Um, it was a way to protect her daughter from any unfortunate events that might happen when um, others may learn of her actual uh, race. So uh, Florence Price is at New England Conservatory, and on the one hand, she's trying to be careful, but on the other hand, she's been guided by uh, her professors in allowing for her to write with using her idiom, her African-American heritage. And so this is where the conflict would begin. Conflict, meaning uh, self-identity. Her pieces, there's no conflict. There is clear representation of themes and motives and rhythms of the African-American heritage, slave songs, not specifically quoted, but like the feeling or the uh, melodic line of a slave song, a spiritual. Um, and you'll hear some of those, those um, characteristics in these first uh, few pieces that I will perform. So starting with in the, land of, in the Land of Cotton Suite, which, by the way, Florence Price used to go to school every morning and pass by a cotton gin. So she writes what she was exposed to in the Land of Cotton Suite. 